Sports Link is brought to you by Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape. Ali Ada, one of the captains on the women's Dartmouth rugby team. Big win against Mount St. Mary's. Um, Mount St. Mary's came and they brought us good competition like a bunch of the other teams. Um, I think what went really well for us is we set the tone really early and showed them, uh, you know, how we play and, and the craft that we're continually, continuously working on. And um, working the ball out to the best space possible, whether that's out wide or uh, behind or through the gaps in the middle, uh, that was working well for us. And I think what really set the tone for this game was our game changers, our reserve players. They came in and they kept they kept that level up, they kept that level of intensity up, and they were we were able to uh, come out with a win and a shutout. So that was great. That was one of the games that you really had circled on your calendar, only because the big contingent of Guam players. After the game, uh, what was that like? Just seeing all the friends and families come together. So the union started way even before the game. Uh, before the game started, I immediately went up and looked for them, and we were, you know, hugging and saying our highs. It continued on the field. Uh, every game we played, we just, you know, kind of gave each other a little dab and. Um, Afterwards, uh, the union was really, the reuniting of all their families and friends was really nice. Um, it was a little taste of home and I think it, it was a special feeling and it was a special game for both sides. So, yeah. And um, what's, who, who do you guys have next? And uh, talk about just the remainder of the schedule for this year's season. Yeah, so for our regular season, we have Harvard and Brown coming up next. So those are the two Ivy openers or the two Ivy games. Um, it's definitely going to be a challenge. We are not letting up. We got to keep, you know, keep pushing and keeping, uh, keep the tone, uh, that we set in the beginning. Um, Harvard is definitely going to be a competition. We just got to keep working on our craft and keep doing what we're, what we're set out to do. Seven Guamanians represented the island at the 2021 Obstacle Course Race World Champions held at Stratton Mountain in Vermont. Team Guam represented very well and stood out during each start of the race divisions as the MC dubbed them the team to travel the furthest. The finish line MC also remembered Guam from all of the other years, this being the fourth, and pointed out how amazing it was that Guam was back despite the challenges. Competitors from all over the world, from the biggest of nations to the smallest like Guam, were present. This year, however, some athletes were not able to travel to the U.S. due to their country's travel restrictions, but the turnout was not bad and spirits were high. This year, seven athletes were Michael Kitigua, three-kilometer championships, 100-meter sprint, and team relay. Sharon Hawley, three-kilometer age group, 15-kilometer age group, and team relay. Tiella Rowland, 3K, 15K, and team relay. James Sardea, 15-kilometer age group. Tim Wenden, 15K and 5K charity. Tom Akagami, 3K, 5K charity. And Jeff Rios also competing in the 3K age group and 5-kilometer charity. Big shout-out to Maurice Jones from Jones Media for the video and some pictures. The Obstacle Course World Championships consisted of three days, all of which were different from cold and wet to dry and sunny. For more info and pictures, check out Trench Challenge on Instagram and Facebook or visit the Trench Challenge website at trenchevents.com. In AAAG Girls Volleyball, the St. John's Knights improved to 2-0 on the season. The Knights beat the defending champions Academy Cougars in four sets, 25-20, 19-25, 25-21, 25-23. Jaden Palomares puts down the shot here on the right side of Academy's defense. After dropping the second set, it was all Knights in the third and fourth, trailing 11 to six in the third. The visiting squad scored eight unanswered points to lead 14-11. Wendy Zhang and Sydney Fernandez came up with some good plays to help close out the set. The fourth set went back and forth with Academy going on some short runs. St. John's led 22 to 19. The Cougars battled and scored three straight points to tie the set at 22. Zhang put the Knights ahead 24-23 as they went on to take the win and stay undefeated. <laughs> Turning over to some soccer, the Father Duenas Friars beat the defending AAAG boys soccer champions, St. John's 2-0 at the GFA field. 
FD's Daniel Glasscock scored the first goal of the match in the 49th minute of play. Glasscock with the left-footed shot, getting it to go past the Knights keeper. Teammate Bobby Haddock put one through in the 60th minute. The Friars' defense did the rest of the work, keeping the ball on the Knights' side of the field. FD is 2-0 on the season. Their first win was a huge shutout over Notre Dame, 18-0. FD will have a bye tomorrow, and will take to the field on Saturday to face the Harvest Christian Academy Eagles at the GFA field at 10.30 in the morning. St. John's will play Harvest tomorrow at Harvest at 4.30. Keep it with soccer news, Aria Cruz and Colleen Naden were named captain and vice captain of the Masakata, respectively, by head coach Ross Awa for Guam's monumental return to the AFC Women's Asian Cup tournament after an 18-year hiatus. Awa is set to release his final roster later this week for the AFC Women's Asian Cup India 2022 qualifiers. Guam was drawn into Group D of the tournament and will kick off its campaign on October 18th against United Arab Emirates. The team next plays against Myanmar on October 21st before finishing out the qualification round against Lebanon on October 24th. Notre Dame at Guam High for some girls high school volleyball in the IIAAG League. ND with the lead 14 to 9 in the first set after a score by Jayana Lazama. Guam High Zamani Washington was getting up over the net with some hard shots. The Royals had their serves working as the home team had trouble with returns. Guam High managed to go on an 8-2 rally to trail 24-20. Cameron Thompson recorded a few late points. ND took the set 25-20. In the second set, five different ND players were able to put down some aces at the serving line. ND won the set 25-17. Amani Washington caught fire in the third set, putting the Panthers ahead 12 to 8 behind a big kill. She put her team on her back and accounted for seven straight aces as the home team pulled away with the lead 20 to 11. Teammate Leilani Westlund and Cameron Thompson helped close out the set 25 18. It was the Washington show in the fourth. Amani recorded nine points. The Panthers led 22-15 before taking the set 25-16. In the end, the duo of Washington and Thompson would hold it down on their home court as the Panthers took the game in five sets. So with the start of the ESA Sports League, kicking off Friday evening with high school football, Monday next week, girls high school volleyball, followed by cross country on Tuesday. Marvin Linder, the ESA League president, here to talk about the latest with uh, the DPHSS um, guidance. Uh, Marvin, I know football's the biggest sport here on island, large crowds. Um, what are we hearing now with uh, as far as spectators? Uh, we're allowing 100 spectators per game, per, per team. So a total of 200 at each contest. And um, we're, we're highly encouraging the parents to get vaccinated, but there's no requirement uh, um, written down right now um, for interscholastic sports. Hopefully we'll get word from public health and um, maybe the governor's office and, and make it a requirement. But right now there's no requirement for vaccination. You're really having to ask parents to kind of um, understand that, you know, this is a guidance, this is a, a protocol thing, uh, nothing against schools or parents, but the limitation is those who are on the list are only going to be the ones able to uh, come in through the gates. Yes, um, we, we did it just like we did earlier this year with lists of, and they will do their COVID checklist. You know, we'll check their temperature and, and make ask them some questions, just like we did last year or earlier this year. Um, yeah, you know, the safety of the athletes and safety of the spectators um, are our biggest concern. You know, we want to have sports. We're allowed to have sports. We're thankful for having sports. So um, this is one of the one of the challenges that we have, and we got to you know deal with the circumstances we've been dealt. So we're allowing 100 spectators, and hopefully that's enough for at least the parents to watch the kids. Um, we're discouraging young, young children from attending the games. Not that they can't. If they're on the list, they can. But, um, you, know, you, you know as well as I do that these kids don't go there to watch the game. They go there to have fun, throw the football, do other things. And, and we're highly discouraging that right now because of the situation we're in. You know, we want people there that's going to watch the game and, and cheer on their teams. 
Um, so, but we are allowing everybody who's on the list and each school provides a list to the home team and they will check off everybody on the list. If they're not on the list, they're not gonna be allowed to attend, unfortunately. One of the teams facing a challenge this season, um, kickoff between the Sanchez and FD game. Um, that game is being forfeited uh, due to some injuries on uh, the Sanchez side. Yes, um, unfortunately, um, I got word yesterday that um, Sanchez is forfeiting the game. Um, hopefully next week they will have a team ready to play and um, we're just gonna play it by ear. Uh, we want we want them to have a team. You know they have a school of sixteen hundred, so we're hoping they can have enough players out there to participate. Um, they had thirty before we stopped. Um, you know before we ceased all practicing, uh, but they've had a lot of injuries, and, and we don't want a team out there that's not going to be um, full squad because if they do, they they could entail more injuries having kids play. You know in every offense, defense, special teams, and so forth. So. That's a concern. So I think uh, Randy and, and Sanchez made the right decision in forfeiting the game against FD. And we'll play it by ear for till next week. Make sure to catch all your NFL action right here on the stations of KUAM. Sunday, October 17th on KUAM TV 11, 11.30 p.m. NFL on CBS, Miami Dolphins at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Monday, October 18th on KUAM TV 11. We have a doubleheader for you. Three in the morning, NFL on CBS, Kansas City Chiefs at the Washington football team. And then at 625 in the morning, more NFL on CBS, the Dallas Cowboys at New England Patriots. Switch the channel over to KUAM TV 8 at 1020 in the morning for some NBC Sunday Night Football, the Seattle Seahawks at the Pittsburgh Steelers. SportsLink is brought to you by Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape.